Moon or Mars? For years, that question defined SpaceX's future. Now, the answer is both. Musk has outlined new plans showing how SpaceX will pursue the Moon and Mars in parallel, revealing a strategy focused on sustained human expansion beyond Earth, not a single destination. What did Musk reveal, and what does it signal for what comes next? Let's take a look closer on today's episode of Great SpaceX. 2026 is rapidly approaching around the corner. That reality means missions to the moon or Mars are no longer distant concepts. They are approaching milestones on an active timeline. It's widely understood that SpaceX is pursuing both destinations. However, skepticism has persisted for years, with many arguing that SpaceX and Musk prioritize Mars while neglecting the moon. Musk has now directly challenged that assumption. Recently, in response to a tweet comparing his net worth to other billionaires and another praising him for building a long-term multi-generational development strategy, Musk made a striking statement. He said, When the mass driver on the moon gets going, I am not sure money will be relevant. It's rare for Musk to reference the moon so directly, especially when the topic was not raised beforehand. This comment alone suggests that neither he nor SpaceX is ignoring the moon, despite widespread belief to the contrary. The implication of his words is even more revealing. Musk was effectively arguing that once a system capable of routinely delivering payloads to the moon becomes operational, the accumulation of financial assets becomes secondary. That mass driver is almost certain to be Starship. It represents a pathway for humanity to withstand potential global threats and a necessary step in expanding civilization beyond Earth, with economic benefits emerging as a natural consequence. The moon offers a clear example of this logic in practice. Musk has pointed to it directly. If SpaceX can perfect large-scale payload delivery to the lunar surface, it would fundamentally change what is possible there. Resource extraction could expand dramatically, with water emerging as the most critical target. Water is essential for life, and access to lunar reserves would enable sustained operations without constant, costly resupply from Earth, benefiting not just SpaceX, but every organization aiming to move beyond low Earth orbit. The Moon also holds a range of valuable materials that could transform civilization. These include rare Earth elements, helium-3, titanium, and silicon embedded in lunar regolith. Such resources could support advanced manufacturing, fuel production, and future propulsion systems designed for deep space missions. Under current plans, SpaceX is positioned to carry out the first human landings on the moon in half a century. Musk's ambitions extend even further. In another update on X, he stated, Moreover, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. Mark my words. This statement followed an announcement in October by NASA Acting Administrator Sean Duffy, who opened competition among organizations for Artemis III. Musk's comment strongly suggests that SpaceX intends not only to secure a role in Artemis III, but to dominate the broader lunar program. This intent is reinforced by Musk's continued references to the moon in public updates, including mentions of Moon Base Alpha, which signals a permanent and long-term presence. Supporting this vision is SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell, widely regarded as one of the most credible and reliable leaders in the aerospace industry. At the center of this effort is Starship. It offers more long-term potential than any other launch vehicle currently in development. Its size, power, and full reusability allow it to transport unprecedented amounts of cargo and personnel to the moon. This capability would dramatically accelerate the construction of a sustained human presence. Analyses also suggest that Starship itself could be converted into a functional lunar base. This approach would simplify construction, reduce costs, and speed up deployment compared to traditional building methods. We discussed this concept in a recent video, and the response was overwhelming. Sharing that episode could help it reach an even wider audience.
Wink, wink. That covers the moon. When it comes to Mars, however, Musk has spoken openly and repeatedly about this goal for years. He has outlined specific timelines for reaching Mars. According to his most recent statements, the first uncrewed mission carrying a meaningful payload is targeted for late 2026. That payload is expected to include the Optimus robot, which would serve as an early test of surface operations and autonomous work on another planet. However, even Musk has acknowledged that this timeline could realistically slip into 2027, given the technical challenges involved. If that first mission is successful, it would open the door for crewed missions as early as four years later. Musk has recently clarified that this window would fall between 2029 and 2031. Even at its closest approach, Mars is far more distant than the moon. Travel times are measured in months rather than days, and launch opportunities are limited by orbital mechanics. Because Earth and Mars follow different paths around the sun, spacecraft can only take the most efficient route during specific windows that open roughly once every two years. Missing one of these windows can delay a mission by a full planetary cycle. Distance is only one part of the challenge. Mars itself represents a harsh and unforgiving environment. Outside of its polar regions, the planet is largely dry and barren. Unless substantial underground water reserves are discovered or advanced methods for producing water are developed, early settlements will face serious limitations. The Martian atmosphere is extremely thin, offering little protection from cosmic radiation and solar storms. As a result, humans on Mars would require protective habitats, shielding, and specialized suits to survive. These obstacles are significant, and they represent only a portion of the difficulties involved in establishing a sustained presence on the red planet. Yet the question remains, what if humanity succeeds in conquering Mars? A recent discussion on X highlighted several reasons why Mars holds extraordinary promise. First, Mars likely formed around the same time as Earth. This shared origin suggests that Mars may once have supported life even if that life no longer exists today. In fact, NASA's Perseverance rover recently discovered rock samples featuring leopard spot patterns, which some scientists say that this is proof of ancient microbial life. While these findings are not definitive proof of life, they reinforce the idea that Mars was once a more Earth-like world. Second, Mars offers immense physical space for expansion. Although it's smaller than Earth, Mars lacks oceans, meaning nearly its entire surface is available for exploration, development, and settlement. In practical terms, this provides enormous real estate potential. Mars also has lower gravity than Earth, which makes it easier to lift materials, move heavy equipment, and construct large structures. These conditions could significantly reduce the energy required for building compared to similar efforts on Earth. Third, while Mars is often associated with extreme cold, its climate is not uniformly hostile. During summer in equatorial regions, temperature can rise to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. While nights remain cold and conditions are still harsh overall, this temperature range highlights Mars as a uniquely viable destination for long-term human activity. Beyond these factors, Mars occupies a strategic position within the solar system, such as serving as a critical outpost for missions venturing deeper into space. For SpaceX and Starship, Mars has another crucial advantage. The planet is rich in carbon dioxide, and if accessible water is present, it would be possible to produce methane and oxygen through chemical reactions. These are the exact propellants used by Starship. Establishing fuel production on Mars would dramatically reduce the need to transport fuel from Earth, making making return trips and further exploration far more practical. There are many other advantages, but these alone explain why Mars has long been considered SpaceX's ultimate goal. Returning to the online discussion that highlighted Mars's potential, Musk responded with just two words that captured his vision with striking clarity. Occupy Mars. This idea of colonization is not new. Musk has discussed the process in detail many times. He has explained that during each launch opportunity to Mars, SpaceX could fly up to 10 Starship missions per day. These launches would place up to 1 million tons of material into Earth orbit. Of that total mass, approximately 250 tons could be delivered to Mars. 
Musk has previously stated that building a self-sufficient city on Mars would require about 1 million tons of supplies, equipment, and infrastructure. Based on this estimate, SpaceX would need four Mars launch opportunities, which translates to roughly 8 to 10 years. Compared to the moon, competition around Mars may prove even more intense. China has already outlined a clear timeline for Mars sample return missions, while NASA continues to face delays and technical hurdles in advancing its own plans. Against that backdrop, the ambitions of Musk and SpaceX for both the Moon and Mars are unmistakable. A central challenge for SpaceX is balancing its lunar and Martian ambitions. Critics argue the company risks spreading itself too thin, but neither destination can be deprioritized without consequences. Focusing solely on Mars would jeopardize NASA lunar commitments, while delaying Mars indefinitely would undermine SpaceX's long-term strategy. In practice, priorities will shift. From late 2026 through 2027, the moon is expected to take precedence due to national goals, NASA contracts, and competitive pressure from China. Mars will remain a parallel objective, but with less immediate urgency. As the decade advances, focus is expected to tilt increasingly toward Mars. Both paths require extensive preparation. Sustained operations on the Moon or Mars demand a large Starship fleet, driving major expansion in manufacturing, testing, and launch infrastructure. SpaceX is already scaling facilities at Starbase and in Florida to meet these needs. A key dependency is orbital refueling. Starship uses most of its propellant reaching orbit, making refueling essential for missions beyond Earth. SpaceX is targeting a mid-2026 demonstration but this depends on proving several foundational capabilities first, including orbital rendezvous, payload deployment, controlled landing, and full vehicle reuse, all planned for demonstration by early next year. For lunar missions, specialized vehicles such as Starship HLS must also be completed and flight tested. These will not be single-use designs. Multiple HLS vehicles will be required to support sustained lunar operations over time. As missions to the Moon and Mars draw closer, Musk's goals continue to grow more ambitious. His statements make clear that SpaceX is committed to both the Moon and Mars, pursuing each without sacrificing the other. Those goals are more than engineering targets. They represent potential turning points for humanity, with implications for economic growth, technological progress, and long-term survival beyond Earth. Success would mark the first sustained expansion of human presence into space. The challenges are significant, but the roadmap exists. If SpaceX succeeds, space will no longer be the domain of a few specialists. It could eventually include ordinary people. The real question is not whether the path is difficult, but whether it's worth pursuing. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.